Okay, so today I will show you how to create custom theme for those RGB glow tube clocks. And you probably know that PCBUA is a sponsor of many of my videos, including this one. And I just recently found out that they are selling those RGB tube clocks for just under $50, which is of course a great price considering that you get six different displays. Now two things before we start. First thing is that I already have a video about creating a custom theme for similar clocks. I will put the link down in the description. The second thing is that if you have those clocks and you see all black displays, please jump to the end of the video. I will show you the solution for this problem. With that said, let's go back to the video. So let's just go all the way to the beginning and assemble those clocks and see how easy or hard is it to connect it to your PC and upload a custom picture. You get the clock in this very nice looking black case and there is this main body in here made from the aluminium. There are six different displays individually packed as well as six individual acrylic enclosures, also the power supply and the USB cable. It's the USB-C type of cable and this one is quite nice because it has the angled connector. So the way you assemble those clocks is you insert those displays into individual slots in the way that they are facing the battery and then you put those acrylic enclosures over those displays. And in here the flat side should be facing the battery. I will use the provided USB cable but instead of plugging it to the power supply I will plug it into my computer. And right away I can see some random time being displayed and I can use this mode button to go to the menu and in here I can set all the different things. And that's done by using this left mode and right buttons. Now this clock has three different themes. You can see that if I jump to the set style and press the mode button, there is this retro theme which was already displayed. We also have a punk theme which looks something like this. And then let me jump back to the menu again and select the theme which will be the DIY theme and that's the one that you can actually change. By default it's this black and white arrow lit digits and they look something like this. Now if I turn the clock around you can see that each individual display also has the RGB LED. And if I go to the set RGB menu I can play all kinds of animations including rainbows and chasing rainbows. But for the theme I will be developing I want all those LEDs to display the same color and that could be done by selecting all same mode and then you press and hold the mode button to go over the rainbow and find the color that you like. In my case I will go with some yellow orange kind of color. By the way if you feel like those LEDs are distracting you can always turn them off in the main menu. So I think it's time to go back to PC and try to upload some different predefined theme. There is a link on the bottom of the product page that you can use to download the software, which is this one. And this is how the software looks like once you run it. Now the first thing you want to do is to click the refresh button and find the port which has this CH340 in it. And the CH340 is the chip being used for the serial communication. If you don't have the drivers installed, there is also a driver installation in the zip package. And once you have the correct port selected, you can use this scroll bar to see the different themes that you can use. And I for example like this one, so I'll select it. And the next step might be a little bit confusing because what you want to do is to click the compile custom picture. And once this is compiled, click the upload image. Now be aware that this takes around 15 seconds. Now a very important thing is that the software has to be placed inside a folder without any Unicode characters in it. If you don't do it, the progress bar will be moving but nothing will actually be uploaded. At least it wasn't uploaded for me. And so once this is uploaded, you can again use the mode button to go to the menu and select set style. And the first two styles are always the same, but the third one, the DIY, is the one that we have selected. And that's this yellow pink one. By the way, you might have noticed that the LED settings is now last, so we are back to the rainbow. So this has to be set every time you upload a new theme. So once we know how to select any of those predefined themes, it's time to find out if we can upload our custom theme. And if I go into the software installation folder, into the IMG subfolder, I can see there are 10 different JPEG images, sized 135 by 240 pixels, which is a resolution of each individual display. And if I replace those with my own JPEG images, I should be able to upload a custom theme. So let's just quickly try that. For creating those images, I will be using a tool called Photopea, which is a free online graphic editor, similar to Photoshop. I will create a new file, sized 135 pixels by 240, which is again the resolution of the display, and set the background color to be black and hit the create button. Now I want to create some text, so I will select the type tool and type in, for example, digit number zero, and set of course the color to be different, for example, white, and make it slightly bigger. Now the fonts doesn't have to be only one color, 
if I open this page, you can see that they could be any color you want. And if I scroll down, I believe there are some examples that you can download. And one of these is this Abalone font. So I'll open it and download it. And then inside of Photopy, I will again click the type tool open the font settings and hit the load font button and select my zip file. After that, I can type in Abalone to select that font and I can probably make it even bigger, for example, by changing the font size here, or I can select Ctrl Alt T or I can select edit free transform and make it bigger to fill the screen just like that. While we are editing the digit, it might also be a good idea to set the center alignment so all the other digits will be also center aligned. And then we can create a copy of the layer by dragging the layer over the new layer icon. Double click and type in digit number one. Another way how to create a copy is to right click and select duplicate layer. Or I can also press Ctrl J on my keyboard that will do the same thing. And so just like that, I will create a few more copies to have the digits from zero up to nine. After that, I will select all the layers with the digits and group it using the Ctrl G shortcut and then export those using the file export layers. But this time click the combinations and that will export combination of the background together with the each individual digit. So just select the format to be JPEG, set the quality all the way to 100% and click the export layers button. And the content of the zip file should look like this. So I'll select all those files and move them inside the IMG folder and replace all the current files. Then I had to restart the application. Again, click the refresh and select the correct port, but make sure to not click anything down here to keep this image displaying custom image. I mean, just a text custom image and then click the compile custom picture. And after that, click the upload image. Again, it might be a little bit confusing because we don't see a preview of our custom image anywhere in the software. But once this is uploaded and you select the set style, the DIY team should include our newly created images. So let me actually select this team to see how it looks like. And it looks very nice, especially considering the fact that we've only spent a few minutes creating this custom team. So I think it's about time to create some team from scratch, not using any predefined font. And the main inspiration for today's team is this video from Neon Kev, where he is showing some alphanumeric displays. And those look really nice, so I would like to do something like this. Those displays are called ZM1350 and upon some searching I did found this file, the documentation for the displays, where you can see the individual segments, those 14 different segments, so that's what I will draw inside of Photopy. I will again create a new file, sized 135 by 240 pixels, black background, and I want to draw some segments and it might be tempting to use a line tool, but when I do so and draw a line like this, later on when I want to adjust this line or maybe rotate it, you can see that it's just getting skewed and those line endings are not round. So instead of using the line tool, I will actually use a pen tool instead. So I'll select the pen tool and then I will click for one point and second click for second point. And if I hold the shift button, I will have a straight line and we don't have any fill, but I will add a stroke in the color being the white color and maybe increase to two pixels for now. I will make sure that the caps are set to round it and try to somehow mimic the placement of those individual segments. I can use the direct selection tool to move those individual points. Again, if I press the shift key, it will be moving in the line. If I don't press the shift key, I can freely move this around. I can create a copy of this layer by dragging it with the alt key being pressed. And I know that the middle segment is only half the size and there should be another segment in here. So again, I will select the pen tool and draw a line here and you can see it was connected to the previous one. So if I want to create a new shape, I probably have to deselect this layer and then I can create a new line like so. Maybe copy it one more time and move it in the middle. And there should be one line going from this point to around this point. Again, using the direct selection tool, I can move those points either with my mouse cursor or I can also use the arrow keys on my keyboard. And I can probably also help myself by duplicating everything, then flipping it horizontally, and then again duplicating everything and flipping it vertically. And then getting rid of the shapes which are there multiple times. In the end, this is how it might look like. I don't want to have those pieces connected, but leaving a very small gap in between those, like you can see in here. Now it might also be a good idea to give those layers a meaningful names and it will save us some time in the future. So this might be our base shape. 
I will select all the line layers and group them together pressing the Ctrl G shortcut. Let's call this BG for background and then duplicate it one more time. And let's create some digit, for example, digit number three. And I will only display the layers that should be displayed for digit number three, which is this one, maybe this one, that one, this one, and this one. Now I want those lines for the selected shape to be much bolder. So I'll select either the path selection or the direct selection tool. And for the stroke outline width, I will enter six pixels that will make it much bolder. And I want to simulate the glow. And when we are simulating the glow, we can double click the layer and open the layer style and use the outer glow effect that will add some kind of glow which you can control the size and the spread and so on. What I like to do is to use the drop shadow effect instead. And that's because when I use the drop shadow effect and change the blend mode to screen and maybe use the red color, and then lower the distance to zero so there is no offset, I can do pretty much the same glow using the size and spread. But what I can also do is to duplicate this effect by clicking this plus icon and maybe change this to some orange color instead and make it slightly smaller and then duplicate it one more time. Again, maybe this will be more of the yellow color, even smaller like so. And so this way I can stack up multiple different effects together to get the look that I'm looking for. And so after spending a little bit more time, this is what I ended up with. You can see I have five different drop shadow effects, starting with this very dark red, going to orange, lighter orange, even lighter orange, all the way to almost yellow color. And every time I'm creating a new drop shadow effect, you can see that I'm lowering the size as well as spread. So those values are getting smaller and smaller. I've also recolored the layer using the color overlay. So it's not purely white, but it's almost white. It's like being this yellowish white color. So once I have this effect applied, I can right click and select copy layer style. So layer style copy, then select all the layers and select layer style paste. And I have nice glowing digit number three. Now, since I was also pasting this for the invisible layers, I can use the same group to create a different digit. But before I do so, I will work on the background. So the background is currently all white and that's kind of distracting. I will start by hiding the digit and double clicking this background layer and use the color overlay to say to some darker color, almost black. Then I will use the setting effect and for now let's just change it for example to yellow so it's very visible. And using this effect you can place the current layer inside the current layer being recolored and a little bit distorted. So this is a very nice effect how to get some more details inside the current layer. And I believe I was using distance around 87 or so pixels with the size of maybe around 9 pixels. The size pretty much sets how, how much blurry it should be. And then the angle just changes the rotation. I believe I was going with like minus 3 degrees. So it's just like highlighting the corners. And after I'm satisfied with the effect, I will change it to some light blue slash violet color, something like this I believe I was using. And now when I show the digit, it should look much better, almost like the example on the video itself. So at this point, let's create those individual digits. And if I again open the documentation, there is this photograph on the very last slide. And if I zoom in, you can see one version of the digits and characters, but of course you can do it completely different. So I'll jump back to Photopy, create a copy of the group, rename it so it will be digit number zero, and then of course show the corresponding layers. Maybe like this, or maybe like that. And then in the same way, I will continue with all the other digits. After this part was done, I've noticed that there is this small cursor on the bottom of the display. So I've added this shape as well. And you can decide if it should be unlit or lit. I've also increased the contrast a little bit and added the color balance adjustment layer. And here for the shadows, I'm removing a little bit of red and adding more blue to make it more colder. And for the highlights, I'm actually doing the opposite. So adding red and removing blue to make it more warmer. I mean, the effect is very subtle, but I kind of like it this way. Unfortunately, having all those extra layers and adjustment layers means now I have to export those layers individually, going to File, Export as PNG file, click the Save button, show the other group, and again File, Export as PNG file, and then show the other group, and so on and so on. And yes, the format should be set to JPEG, not PNG file. And after a little bit of clicking, this is how the images should look like. So we again replace the images in the IMG folder, and then restart the application. Click the Compile Custom Picture and Upload Image. And jumping to the Set Style menu and selecting the DIY theme, we should see our newly created images. And I really like how this turned out. Now let's talk about what happens when you are compiling custom picture. 
If I open the application folder, there is a folder called ESP tool. And if I go into the data, you will see it includes our custom images, as well as the other two teams, the retro one and the punk one, which makes me think that maybe we can replace those images with our own images. And maybe we can have three custom teams instead of only one custom team. And I think that what happens is that those images are placed in this folder. And then the compilation is just calling this ESP tool using this patch file, which results in this bin file. And that's the file being uploaded it to the clocks. So let's try to replace those other two teams with our custom images and see if we can have three custom teams. And I will be using the very same design, but this time I will use a different segment to construct those digits. For example, the digit number three can look like this, but it can also look like that. So what I will do is I will copy all those individual groups and then again use different segments to construct those digits. Now it might be hard to distinguish between those two sets of digits, so I will also recolor the second theme and I will use the channel mixer adjustment layer and for the red channel I will not use red but instead I will use blue channel and for the blue channel I will not use blue channel but instead I will use a red channel which means that now everything should be blue. I can probably also show the cursor to make it slightly different from the first theme and now I need to export every single layer. And since I want to replace the punk theme I will for example use the name punk 0 to punk 9. Again, the exporting could be done by going to File, Export as JPEG, give it the right name, set the quality to 100% and click the Save button. And once I have those digits exported, let's replace the old punk digits in the data folder. In the application, click the Compile Custom Picture and of course Upload Image. And so if I now go to the set mode submenu, I can see that the punk theme is no longer a punk theme, but our blue digits. And if I select the theme, it looks something like this. And it looks especially nice if I also set all the RGB LEDs to show the blue color. If you want, you can repeat the process one more time to replace the retro theme. As with 14 different segments, you can still recreate those digits in a slightly different way. And we can also probably recolor it to a different color, maybe the green one, again using the channel mixer. For the red, I will use green. And for the green, I will use red, maybe like this. And then export this one by one. So file, export as JPEG and repeat it for every single digit. Replace the images in the data folder so they look something like this and upload it to the display. And now all the teams are our own teams. Now the green one might look a little bit unusual, but I kind of like it as well. But what I like the most is the fact that you can actually have three different custom teams. Before I end this video, let me tell you two more technical details. If you take a closer look, there is this small CR battery under this enclosure. And that one is being used for the RTC module, for the real-time clock module. So when you power it off, it will still remember the time and then keep counting the time. If you want to replace the battery, you can use the provided tool to remove the side of the enclosure and put it a new one. But my guess is that the current one will last at least a year or so. The second thing is about what to do when you see all the displays being black. I mean being black even if you provided power. And that could easily happen if you use the wrong software. So if you don't download the software from the PCB way but from another source, you can end up with the clocks not displaying anything. You can still go to the menu using the mode button but as you can see all the teams are empty. And fortunately the solution is quite simple. You just download the correct software from the PCB way website. That's the application that we are using during this whole video. And you just upload any team and that should fix it. And that's pretty much it. That's how you create custom teams for those cool looking clocks. If you have any comments or questions, please put those down in the comment section. Thank you very much for watching this video and I hope to see you soon. Thanks and bye.